All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Support Saturday Masterclass Edition. And today, our masterclass is with Dawn Thorpe, and it's on time to grow. It's marketing time. So just go ahead, Dawn, you can take it away. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Okay, so for those that don't know me, I'm Dawn Thorpe. I have been in this business with both childcare and preschool for about 17 years now. Um, I went to solely preschool. This is my third class year of solely just preschool classes. Um, and so I have been in the past state licensed in three different states. Um, that would be Oregon, Arizona, and here in Idaho. I am an in-person, uh, obviously with <laughs> being state licensed, I'm an in-person, uh, preschool. Um, but I'm working towards broadening, um, my program to online as well this year and a few other little things I'm working on. So that's my introduction. Um, and I usually ask, um, because this is a, a Zoom and I see you guys in person, if people can turn on their cameras, I like to see you. I like the interaction reactions. So that way um, it kind of drives the, the conversation. Uh, I feel not alone that way. <laughs> So, and I'm really nervous, so I've never done this before because I usually am the one that sits in the back and listens to everything <laughs> and takes it all away. So also be prepared um, when I do this, I'm really hands-on. I'm going to be asking you guys to join me as we put together a few things. So that way, when we're done with the class, you guys actually have something that you can kind of take away with it and it'll all be on your computer. So just be prepared for that, but. So I feel like I was able to teach this class because I, through the 17 years, have come up with lots of different ways to market because in reality, marketing is like a huge part of our business. Unfortunately, um, like with schools, they don't have to market because all kids go to an elementary school, right? Um, but for our preschools, or if you have a childcare, whatever, or an extended program, you are the one that brings in the people. So I think the biggest thing of marketing is really getting your name out there and being confident with who you are and what your program looks like. That is like your number one. If you're not confident, people are gonna read it all over you. And I, I'll be honest, I haven't been always as confident about my program, even though I had an amazing program from day one. I haven't always been confident, couldn't always put my name out there, just felt like, oh, you know, um, if they find me, they find me. But I, I feel like after 17 years, I don't have the time to play that game anymore. I really need to just get my name out there. I need people, as Joy would say, um, have the no like trust factor in me. And that's what marketing is all about. They need to get to know you. They want you want to have them trust you and then like you as a business. So I'm going to go over like a few of my older stuff. And then as we go, I'm going to actually take us through some marketing that you guys can actually do today. So um, sometimes it just starts with like a, a, a simple business card. So um, my one of my old, this is one of my old business cards. And it also actually, let me take a step back. It starts with your logo. Everything goes off of your logo. So you need to make sure that you have a really good logo that has colors that you can do within your program. It has things that people can relate to and it, it's eye-catching. That's the biggest thing about your logo because every marketing piece that you have will go off of that logo, okay? So like my main colors for my class, my preschool is called Forest Friends Preschool. And my main colors are like the browns and orange um, and green. But I also, once in a while, when I need more colors, I incorporate a little bit of blues and some grays. And that'll help sharpen my, my other colors. So you'll see all of my marketing off of my coloring from my specific logo. So this is my logo. And even though I've changed like my different marketing, my logo itself has never changed. So I have, because I'm 
I hope you guys can see. I have my three animals and I don't always have all three animals on every marketing logo, but I always go off of my theme. And I think that's the most important thing is this, is your logo, is your theme and is your, your um, colors. Okay. Cause you can do everything when you do that. So um, this is one of my old business cards. And so you see it has what pops is my logo. Next, what pops is what my address or my phone number, my address, and that I had a Facebook. At the time, I didn't even have a website. So on the back, I had my original like kind of logo for it, it, which was peace of mind for you, learning and fun for your child. And then I kind of listed some of the things that we did at the time. So I have changed my business cards almost every single year, to be honest. And that's the thing that um, is really good to learn. Like, it's okay to change how you do your marketing. If you find one business card isn't working for you, then change it. It's okay to change it, you know, because then all of a sudden you're handing out something different and it might catch their eye differently the second time that you hand it to them if it didn't the first. Okay, so I'm going to show you my now current, um, my current business cards. So I've gotten a little more confident in myself and I've learned a little more marketing. I know it's kind of shiny. So I have this like shiny top on my current business cards. I put a picture of me because that's building that no like trust factor. So they know who is watching their kid, right? And I just put... Join Teacher Dawn at Forest Friends Preschool, where the adventure begins. And see, I actually, these trees on the side, I have these trees in a lot of my marketing. And so even though it's not in everything for my marketing, I tie it in by having it in multiple things rather than just either all of it or just one. Does that make sense? And so then my back has my logo. And then it says, peace of mind for you, learning and fun for your child. And then it has my local website now, since I have one, and my online website and my phone number. And then, so I did my business cards. I found it was like the cheapest and they come out really good quality because I've tried different companies. I've tried um, local places. Uh, all kinds of stuff for, for my different marketing. And I found for business cards, the ones that I like the most are at Vistaprint. And so I, I just pay a little extra to have the better, thicker. Like these are really thick cards. They're not like little thin paper thin. Like I did thicker cards and I did a nice smooth finish on the front because that, that shininess kind of pops for parents and I always get comments oh I love your your business cards those are so cute okay so that's business cards let me see if I have any other ones that I pulled out I just wanted to give a couple examples okay so then I also do flyers I've done flyers that doesn't say this to print uh, Lori, what do you mean that doesn't say this to print? I try this to. Sorry. <gasps> okay. The free ones are greatly discounted. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do an upgrade on mine to have the shiny and thicker paper. I never knew that free ones have a. The, the Vista print will go on it. All right. So another thing that I really do is flyers. I've done flyers uh, for a really long time now. And I do them in different sizing. And I'll show you just a few examples. Like these are my older ones. So like I said, I have the leaves that go with the forest friends. My logo that pops. See, my logo's on everything like now enrolling. And then I well, uh, said my free welcome kit. And here I kind of, and this is before actually, I believe this was, this flyer was made before I went to solely just preschool. So I was also doing um, like a childcare base where they were at the home a little bit longer. So now enrolling, I put my address, 
at what ages I'm accepting, my class schedules, what the tuition looked like. It's so important to put what your tuition is. I learned even before I met Joy for years, if you don't put your tuition prices on your flyers, you will get hundreds of calls just to ask what the tuition price is. And that's all they want to know. And so that's taking up so much of your time. If you're getting all these calls, just ask, well, how much is it? How much is it? Everybody I mean, that's most people's first tuition is to ask, how much is this? Is it even worth considering? And so they'll ask the price and then they'll, okay, well, thank you. And if they, they'll probably discuss it with their spouses or something and then get back to you. So it's really important to put your prices so that way they, if they need to discuss it with the partner, they can before they even call you. So really when they call you, they're much more of a lead already that it's much easier to convince them, hey, let's set up a time for you to come see the preschool. You're already at that next step. You kind of skip some of those preliminary things because they already saw it on your flyers and on your, your things. I just wouldn't put that on like your business card. Business card should be short, sweet, and something easy for them to contact you. Um, and then I, I put come take a tour and reserve your spot. My Facebook page, because once again, these were before, I'm sorry, I'm so bad at angles on the camera. <laughs> um, I, this is before I had a website, so I would direct them to my Facebook page. So if you don't have your website set up, at least direct them to something where they can see other things that you have built um, so they can learn more about your preschool. So you always, on any flyer, want to send them to multiple locations because they want to do their own research before they actually talk to you in person. We're in a day and age where people would much rather text you then call you and they text you because they don't want to take the time to get on a phone call and feel like they're being marketed to. And that's the biggest thing in marketing. You have to make it feel like you're not actually marketing to them, that you're having full enriching conversations with them. So that way they feel comfortable enough to say, yeah, I would like to come to your preschool. But that's when you warn them, hey, but when you do come and do this tour at the end, I am going to ask you if you want to join. So that way they are prepared for for that marketing piece when they are in person. But in the meantime, they don't really want to talk a long time on the phone. They just want basic information so that way they can make an educated decision before they even see the place. They don't want they don't want you to be like a car salesman who likes going to look for something and you're like constantly harassed about what you're looking at. And so it's it's that fine line for us as business owners to not cross that line because then they're going to shut down and not talk to you. Okay. They're going to shut down and not want to be around because they don't want to be marketed to. They want to just have a friendly conversation about how you can help their child. So, all right. And then once again, at the time, it was my mainest, my most main quote was peace of mind for you, learning and fun for your child. So I had highlighted that. So this is an old flyer and see how I have it. And there's a five by seven. I actually handed these ones out. And I made eight by tens of the same exact thing where I posted it up all over the place. I have so many things to show you guys, so sorry. <laughs> so showing like different sizing, you can do all kinds of different sizing. I've done little ones that I can send in the mail to people. I've done a little bit bigger where I'm handing them out. And I also do like this big size. So this one is off of Joy's template. And I have messed with this and I think I've made this same template made at least five different versions of it at this point, because you always want it to look fresh and new and it's okay to use the same thing, just freshen it a little different. And I'll show you my next one and you'll see how it's still, it's the same thing, but it still looks kind of different. So this is Joy's marketing and I kind of made it work for my preschool. So I put pictures from my own preschool class that I had taken, I got, I went through and I, you know, picked the most, the ones that I liked most that really stuck out to me or that if I posted online, a lot of likes and a lot of hearts from other parents, if they liked it, I already knew that these were eye catching pictures. If they liked these ones over other ones, that's why I kind of picked like, I had tons of comments on this when I posted it at the beginning of the year. So at the end of the year for the next year, 
That's mm -hmm. why I, I put this picture because I knew already mm -hmm. without having to do any work that this was eye catching. So I put those and set up my marketing. And this is a full page. Mm -hmm. When I post these flyers in, at places, I actually laminate. I laminate all my stuff. So it's the same, same thing, completely laminated. And that way it's thicker. Someone can't rip it when they're trying to look at it. Like if you're putting it on a door for like here in I-Town, we have like those sliding doors because we have smaller markets. It won't rip or catch on anything because it just lays flat against you no. Know. And with the shininess, it kind of is a little eye popping. And so I laminate a lot of stuff and, and that way it stays good too. Like in the rain, when I lived in Arizona, I actually would put flyers like this on the side of post office boxes. Um, so in Arizona, because it's uh, how their houses are, there's tons of houses really close together. So no one has mailboxes in front of their house. Like each community has a side mailbox with all everybody's on the side. So I would set it up where each side would have one of my flyers that was laminated. And that way, whenever they would go check their mail, it was right there on the side. And I noticed it did really well in the lamination for like the heat. It did really well, excuse me. It did really well for um, rain because, you know, it, it didn't change anything. So. And this is my most recent one. So like I said, it's the same template, but I kind of changed it up a little bit, right? I didn't have the solid colors anymore like that. And I changed my colors around it, even though it's the same exact kind of coloring that I have been using from my logo the whole time. And I just changed for more current pictures as well. So these ones are all current from the previous year because I'm trying to engage my previous year families as well. So that way it's almost if they see it, it's a reminder for them to tell other people about the preschool and how much they loved it. So they continue to enroll. So it's, and it's all my updated stuff for that school year. So if I update my prices, I put my prices. And then if you notice, I even added a little thing this year where I added the little arrows to really kind of focus on what classes that I was doing. So, and I also added my newer like logo where the adventure begins. And I laminated them too. So when I post them up in places, I laminate them. But when I hand them out to people, I don't laminate them because that takes a lot of time and you're trying to do your marketing as uh, cost effective as you possibly can. All right. I'm just showing, like I said, I'm just showing a few things that I like I do for marketing and then we're gonna go through things. So another one that I really like doing, I get these on Vistaprint, but I make big boards. So like I said, I have like the trees in with it. My name is bigger than big. So that way, if they're driving and they pass by this, they can see it. It has my phone number and my website. I don't want much information on here because they're going to be passing by. It's it's like they're going to see it very quickly. And so you want as little for them to have to glance at. It's just like making like a yard sign. If you're making a yard sign, are you putting all the things that you're selling at the yard sale? Or are you just paying, hey, go this way? Because you want them to pay attention to the simple things. So I definitely need to say my name. You can see I have like my bear and my fox, my trees. So they don't even have to read it. They recognize it because they've seen it before with my logo. And so then they can see my phone number and my website. And so I, I got these off of Vistaprint as well. It gives you an option. So these are stakes. I just put these in the ground. For those that have never done this. And it just clips into it. And then, so then you can have these outside, especially if you're in person. And even if you're online, 
Do you guys ever see those like posters for um, like different sites that you can go to? So it's okay to do this for both online and for in-person because you just want more people to be seeing what it is that you're trying to market. So even though online can be worldwide, it's okay to try and market to your local area too. It just makes it that much more personable. So I also, um, in front of my house, I, I wish I would have taken a picture and had it on my computer beforehand, but my husband and I, we built in front of our house. We got the right licensing, the right permits, and we were able to build this huge like billboard. And on Vistaprint, I also created um, a really big like banner. And so I have this huge banner um, up on both sides of like a billboard type thing in front of my house. So there is no question as to whether Forest Friends Preschool is here or not. Like, even if they're like, well, I don't really know which house to go to. It is right out front. It is loud and proud, let me tell you. And we're also planning because we did get the right permitting and licensing. We're actually gonna do it in our backyard as well. So for me, I live between two like main, um, I, I live, on one side of our house, the front end, we have an old highway and on the back is actually the freeway. And so it's a major freeway this way. And we get a lot of traffic back there because um, we have like acreage. So we're a little, our house is a little ways off from the freeway, but our backyard leads all the way up to the freeway. So we're going to do a really big billboard um, in the Hi. back end too. Hey. Hey. What are you doing? I'm on a meeting. Okay, um, so that's gonna bring me a lot of traffic for people just coming through because I live like maybe an hour or so from the border of Utah. So that is cross traffic, people going to Utah, people coming back through this way. Um, and so that'll bring us a lot of traffic for both, even my local and when I, I do my online because I'm gonna put my online website on there as well for those that aren't local, right? For people coming from state to state that are just traveling through, that alone will bring in quite a few students just because I have like a billboard type thing. And really, um, I think like when we're talking cost and things like that, um, just to build it, it'll probably be like 700 ish dollars. And then the banners, I believe that size are, if I remember right, um, was like $120 a piece or something to that effect. But cause I got the nicer grommets, I got the really good fabric, all that kind of stuff, because I want it to last a long time. So when you put that in perspective, so that would be what, seven, eight, nine, almost a thousand dollars, right? But if that brings me, say, 100 students for my online, that pays it off in my first month, right? So you have to recognize, I think our biggest thing a lot of people myth-wise is that you don't have to put any money into your business to start your business. That's, that's so not true. You have to invest into your business to get business. And the more you invest, usually is the more that you will get clientele. So... I investing in things like um, Facebook ads. I don't personally do that. Um, I don't, I don't, haven't seen a payoff for myself. I've only done it one time and I never saw any kind of payoff in doing it that way. So um, I also do, um, I'm going to show two more things that I do and then we're going to go into the hands on. So at the beginning of the school, after I get some signups, I send these in the mail to all of my clients. So to let them know about my meet and greet, and it kind of goes over. Now, a lot of people wouldn't, and I have, it's two sides. It's like a postcard. A lot of people would think that this isn't marketing, right? That you're not actually advertising your business because you're sending it to people um, that has already signed up, right? But it is. Everything that you do is marketing. Every time you put your logo or your name on something, you're marketing. Every time, like, 
I believe everyone is a potential client. Okay. So if you look at say an older couple that are retired and they're older, do you think that that's a potential client? I do because they have grandkids more than likely. They have kids that they're going to tell and they're going to have grandkids. I can't tell you how many clients I have gotten just from grandparents telling their kids to enroll their children with me. All right. So these I go out, it talks about our meet and greet and why I look at this as a marketing piece is because I have my logo. It's a, it's a um, postcard. So guess what? When it's going through the mail, anybody can see this. It's not in an enclosed envelope. So guess what? My logo is being seen by more than just that family. And that family, when they get it, more than likely, they're posting this on their fridge. So anybody that comes into their home is going to see this logo more than likely sitting on their fridge. And a lot of people love looking at the fridges because there's like kid pictures and things on the fridge. It's just, you know, one of those central location things that a lot of people see is people's fridges. And so I have this and it basically just tells, hey, we're having our meet and greet. These do these things. And then on even on the back tells us all our upcoming dates for the next month or two. And so on there, I usually have like an event or something and it tells some of the stuff that we do. So then if someone else is seeing this, they're like, wow, they do a lot. What place is this again? Like it could cause people asking questions to now your clientele. So you're just trying to broaden your horizon as much as you can. So I find these really helpful and the parents really like them. So actually I just print these on my own printer at home, double-sided. And then I take like a contact paper to the front side. So this is actually shiny, if you can see. I just did like a contact paper, a clear contact on it and I cut and look how nice it looks. It looks professional. It makes it that thicker paper. It's like a stock paper. And the back is still able to be here, able to be stamped. And you're able to put like a stamp and the, the post office is able to stamp it to send it in the mail. So these are really good. I really love doing those. And I get a lot of, wow, that was really cool. That looks really professional. All right. So one last one I was going to show. This summer I tried something new and it was really fun. I, uh, hang on one second. I'm going to get a drink. So this summer I got married in May and I found the cutest little foxes. Okay. And as you can see with Forest Friends, one of my big animals is a fox. And so I had these little foxes in a groom. And there's one with like a, that was a little bride that had a little veil. It, they were really cute. So I found these online at Oriental Trading Company which I also suggest because they have a lot of really great resources on there that are really inexpensive and they can have you know, like, you can get really cheap toys for, um, to do little goodie bags for both um, Halloween goodie bags for um, like Christmas, things like that, that are really great prices. These were a little more expensive, but I wanted to try something completely different. So I did a scavenger hunt. <laughs> It was so fun. So I um, made these tags. You can see them. It says, your fox tax stick, you found a forest friend's box. And then the, I'm always opposite. And then the barcode actually led them to my Facebook profile. So on it, I wrote, and you can't see, it says, scan me. And it says, share your photo. Share your find with a photo and receive $25 off first month's tuition. Only one per child. And then on the back, you can see I got me, a picture of me and Foxy, which I'll talk about in a minute. It says, join Teacher Dawn and Foxy and gave my website and my phone number. And I actually had people um, posting their pictures. So now what did I just do with this marketing? I got involvement with my city. So my city then felt like I was trying to make my city a part of my preschool and making yourself a part of your city is huge. 
people will start to get to know you that way. It's like no trust like factor. And when you get to know people in your city and in your area, they will, even if they don't need preschool, they'll start telling other people about me. There's been so many times living here after the first year or two that I didn't even have to introduce myself. Like I'd be hanging out with a friend and someone would come over or something and they're like, oh, this is the girl that runs the preschool down the street. And they're like, oh, I know that place. They have the cutest signs, you know? And so you're really building your involvement because you want people talking about you, right? And that's the biggest thing about marketing. You really want people talking about you, spreading the news for you. So I made these cute little tags and I actually on Amazon, they have these um, like sticker overlays. Can you see it's kind of holographic? Yeah, I was, I put like a holographic overlay on them to make them really, you know, like eye catching and fun. I didn't do it on the backside that way they, there was, I just put like a, a standard laminate on the back. Um, well, this one has it, but on all the other ones, I realized that way, no, I take that back. I did the the holographic on the back here and I did the regular one because after I did this one, I realized that it was hard to do the QR code with the holographic. So I just did a clear on the front, but I did the fun holographic on the back. It's just those little things sometimes that really brings more people in because they see that you're going the extra mile. I think going the extra mile is huge. So I took a little like string, like a um, like a brown kind of string to keep it like that more natural feel with force friends. And I attached it like that. And I hid 200 of these all over my city. And the reason why I did them in the laminate like this was so that, hey, if it rains, that's still okay. It didn't just ruin that whole thing. Or if the sun really beats down on it, it still keeps it pretty good. So thinking about the lamination, you know, is really big because you want to keep some of this. You don't help know how long until they'll actually receive it. And so, or they're looking for it. So I was trying to prepare for a longer term, just depending, because you just never know. So I did like 200 of these. It was really fun. A lot of, you know, and I tied them in, in pretty obvious places in some of them. And I really got part of my local town. I put some, I talked to the store owners, put some near the register. I, I hung them up in the, in the post office. I put them at local parks, just things that you don't make them so hard to find that no one's ever going to find them, but definitely make it where they, they're going to find them like, and bring your city in with it. I did it at a local snow cone place we have here even, and she ended up uh, partnering with me because of it and gave me a whole bunch of coupons that the kids could go get free snow cones, because guess what? That just helped me and it helped her. And, and so you never know what could come up with some of your marketing. And I just printed all those on like one big sheet and I cut them myself. Like, I don't have like big cutters or big resources like that. I just do it myself because you know what? I, I this is the materials that I have to work with. So I'm going to make that work. All right. I know I'm starting to run out of time with all the stuff I have. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm good. Okay. Um, so I also made for this, this Halloween um, stickers. And I'm going to put these in my goodie bags. So see how I put the holographic on these two because it makes it fun. And it just says Happy Halloween from Forest Friends Preschool. So I've made stickers. I've made all kinds of stuff. And I actually just did these. I bought sticker paper at the store. I printed it on my printer. And I put the holograph overlay on it. And I cut them out. And I made a whole bunch because I'm going to make 200 goodie bags. So that's about 200 stickers. So like... Put in your logo. Don't be afraid to put your logo on things and try new things. Um, it's really big, you know, like on everything. Anything could be a marketing tool in all reality. Um, yeah, I forgot I did have more. So these are going to be part of like my Halloween goodie bags. 
So I picked a color. I just went to the dollar store, their local dollar store, bought all of their green bags because green is one of my main colors, right? And it doesn't have to be the exact green that I'm going to do for like my marketing um, for all this kind of stuff, right? Because I can pick that on my computer, but I can't pick it for different resources in, in, um, in the stores. So I just picked a green and I did two different type of bags. And I'll kind of show you. I don't have everything in here yet, but this is kind of what I started with. And I got this idea actually from Jamie in, in, in uh, online where she had a bunch of extra, just extra tools, extra resources that she had from other goodie bags she made. And she just put together like a hundred really fun uh, free goodie bags. Um, and so that's kind of, I took that idea and I adapted it. Um and with that, I'm going to say Canva. Canva will save your life. And I I was all about being cheap because it's so expensive to run a business. And at first I was like, I don't want to pay for Canva. I don't want to pay for another monthly subscription. I already have so many. I want to keep my budget under certain things. And then I kept running into the problem there is like, oh, well, I want that premium thing. I want that premium thing. I want to use this more. And so I finally broke down and I paid for the subscription and I will never go back. I'm going to be honest. I love Canva. You can get so many resources and tools on there. And I'm going to today, like take you guys through where we can do um, a template that I I taught myself to do and it actually is really fun. And so we'll we'll get to that. But for these bags. So on Canva, I went and I found kind of like a template, but I made it my own, right? So I did one paper. I don't know if you can see. Can you guys see? I wrote, I did a trace the letters and I wrote things that they can trace. This is Foxy, Teacher Dawn, the trace. It was super easy. Like this took me maybe five minutes to bake. And so then I took an eight and a half by 11 paper and I just put two on a paper and I printed them, printed a whole bunch of them, like 50 of them. And then I just cut it down the middle. And now I have a resource that looks super professional, right? And it's something that will make the kids think about by tracing these letters things about my business, right? So you can put things that relate to your business. If you have like rainbows, you can put rainbows and you can put the different colors or something like that, something related along your theme. So, cause that's why I said like your logo is the most important thing. And your, your logo is what also creates your theme, right? So you did your logo based on your niche and what you're really interested in teaching and how you're going to teach it. And then you have your colors and then you kind of have a theme at that point, right? And so you just do like theme words or your name so that they can get to know you or something that's big for your preschool that you involve. So I did that. I added like stickers. I added a pencil and an eraser and some candy. So I'm also going to add in a couple of little Halloween toys and maybe a little more candy. Um, and how simple is that? Then you can like fold them, staple them, and either like I'm going to put the stickers in these that have Happy Halloween from Four Students Preschool. And then I might even put a little sticker out here that just has my logo. Okay. So it, once again, that's advertising. And so I'm going to be going and putting these. Um, simple, easy bags, just like 10 bags for a dollar or something like that. 12 bags for a dollar. Just depends on how many you're doing. So you're under $20. You're putting together these like over a hundred. I think it was like under $20. I put together over a hundred of these kits. So sometimes it's just like thinking outside of the box and, and, um, some of the things in here, like some of the candies, I found some of the candies on clearance because they can, the stores can only hold them for so long after an event, right? So you can get really cheap candy in the clearance aisle. So I just got like some taffy. I got like, 
I think it was 25 pieces of taffy for 50 cents. So that's 25 bags that I just put a piece of candy in, right? So it's just kind of doing your math and trying to look for the cheaper things. You can find things at the dollar store, like the racers. I got, I want to say it had 30 of those little racers for a dollar. So you just kind of got to look around and and make sure you're doing the less expensive things. But when you put different stuff in there, it really just gives you that wow factor. Also, sorry, I'm always needing water. <laughs> my welcome kits. And this, I believe, is my last thing before we do the hands-on. So. My welcome kits are super easy. They didn't cost me hardly anything. And I pay them off basically in a small amount of money from their registration fees, okay? And so this doesn't cost me anything, but I do do a lot of this myself. Um, I don't necessarily recommend everybody doing everything themselves because you can get overwhelmed. I like to do arts and crafts. And so some of this I just do because I enjoy it. And it's like a hobby and I'm able to uh, do more for less for my business because I, I already just enjoy it as like a pastime. And so I find a little bit of fulfillment in doing some of those arts and crafts, but I make these bags. So this is a vinyl. I actually do the vinyl myself. I, I designed my thing um, and then I have a vinyl printer. So I have a silhouette and or not a printer but like a cutter and I cut it out I cut out the green then I cut out the white and so then I just pressed them so this is like a heat transfer vinyl and I just got my bags at Hobby Lobby they're just a cute bag and I actually tell the kids that they need to bring this bag to preschool every day and I, some of the things I like about these kind of bags is that there's no pockets on the inside because in person, one of the important things is that parents aren't putting like medicines in the bag. And I noticed in the past when I was doing childcare, parents usually, right, they only want to carry around the one bag for their kid. It's almost like a diaper bag and they fit anything that they would need in there, but they deliver that to to preschool or childcare as well. And a lot of times parents will put medicine like Tylenols and things like that in there. And it's super unsafe. You're not supposed to have any kind of medication in one of their bags at school. So this allows me when they first get there to quickly open their bag, look in and make sure they don't have anything hazardous in their bag. Or if I have any concerns with something in their bag, I know right away, I don't have to go through 20 pockets on the other kinds of bags to make sure that it's safe. So some of the things I do in here, I do like a little practice at home. So parents are kind of aware of some of the basic concepts. And I laminate this because I want them to be able to use it throughout the year. So I only laminate the one sheet in their bag and I just keep it super simple. But I do fun things in there. So look, I'm marketing my preschool again by having coloring pages for the kids. So I just put my my preschool at the top. What year? So that way I can change this each year. And with I rotate things. So I have four different pages every two years. So I have these four pages. And then next year, I'll have four different pages. And then the year after that, I'll go back to these. And that way, I'm also um, swapping things for the different um, curriculum years. So like this one has the fox. It has a deer. It has a bunny. Because it just kind of goes with that horse friends theme. And it has the, the squirrel. And so I have other ones for my second year. But these are really fun because then the kids can color them. If a friend comes over, they are like, oh, what are you coloring? Or the parents are going to put this once again on their fridge or someone or on the wall because they're proud of their kid for coloring something fun, right? It gets them thinking even at home about your preschool. Okay. I also do like sanitizer. These were like the free coupons from the snow place. Like I told you, they gave me. And I just put my logo on the back. That way, every time 
So I did a sticker. I made my own stickers and I put our logo on the back because every time one of the families redeem these, that snow cone place knows it came from us and then I help promote them. And then they're more likely to work with me in the future too. Also in this, I do a little bag and I'm going to read this off really quick because I think it's fun. So it says, welcome to your classroom. I'm so glad that you're here. I have filled a bag with goodies to help describe our year. The crayons are to color your days bright and beautiful. The bookmark is for all the great books we will read. The pencil represents the learning that each day you will do. The sharpener will keep you ready. When your pencil is no longer new, the eraser is, is to let you know that it's okay to make mistakes. That is how we learn. The stickers let you know this class sticks together as a team and helps each other. The smarties show that I know you are smart and really special too. The glow stick is to remind you to share your bright ideas. The lifesavers are a reminder that I am here for you. The laughy taffy means we will laugh a lot throughout our wonderful year. The starbursts are to tell you that you are a star to me. School can be tough at times, but also fun, you'll see. And then I find it, love teacher Don. And when I signed it, this is the same as on my business cards. It's the same, um, if you can see, the same kind of text. I know, it's kind of, anyway, same kind of text as I have on my business card. And once again, I have my logo. And inside, I do have all those things. And even the bookmark, once again, I'm marketing. I made these bookmarks. I printed them off. I laminated them. I punched a hole. And I made a fun little yarn puck ball. So I have different ones of these too that have different animals. So I have the fox, I have the deer, I have the bear, you know what I mean? So I'm once again, incorporating my logo, even though I don't have my logo on this, right? So these things are being used by the families um, that come in the preschool. And the sticker inside, once again, it's a horse friends preschool sticker because I want them to be as proud of their preschool as I am proud of this preschool. So every little thing that you're adding and when you're adding value, put in, don't be afraid, don't be shy, put in your logo, put your stuff because these things are going places, right? Even if a kid sticks a sticker on an envelope that they're sending to their grandparents, did they not just send off your logo to someone else? You know what I mean? Like it could be anything. You're just getting it in their brains. This is a big deal. My preschool is a big deal because for all of you, your preschools are a big deal. You need to market and you have to be confident in that marketing. So kids are bringing this to school every day, right? That means it's in their parents' car. It means that they're carrying these around in their car place to place. So then they're marketing for me. I'm not doing anything. And they paid for it in the end for these bags through their registration. So they're paying me to market for me. Isn't that crazy? Like it's a concept that I really like, I really thought through that I'm like, how much better can it get that you're having people market for you and they pay to be here and they're marketing for you. I love that. Okay, so now here we're gonna do some hands-on. Are you guys ready? Sorry. <laughs> I know, how much more time do I have? Probably only like 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> There's a lot. I've done so much marketing that it's made it hard to like limit it down in time. All right. Who has heard of EDDMs? Let me see hands raised. Have you guys heard of EDDM? All right. I want everybody to be ready to um, interact with me now. Okay. So I'm kind of done with the just one-sided, right? I want you to guys kind of interact with me. On Zoom, there is like hand raising. If you've heard of EVDM, raise your hand. That's why I said everybody turn on your, your cameras if you can, because I like interaction. Raise your hand if you have heard of EVDM. All right, now put your hands down. All right, now put your hand up if you've actually done EVDM. Ooh, I don't see any hands. Oh, I have the one. One hand. All right. Why? EDDM is really awesome because it's going to get your name out further, right? So EDDM is called Every Door Direct Mailing. All right. 
Um, and every door direct mailing, basically, it's the post office has routes. And when they deliver mail, they have the mail go on certain routes so they know where to go and it's a lot more efficient for them. Well, the post office knows exactly how many people are on each route. We also know information about the general income for each route, um, where, where that income market is. And so you can find for your local area or beyond, just depending on what you want to do, you can find exactly how many people live within your area. And you can send a letter in the mail, postcard or something to that effect, to every person in on which routes you pick. So I'm going to pull up USPS. I would love for all of you guys to type in to your computers USPS with me. And I want you to see it for your own local area. Okay, so I'm, can I share my screen, Therese? Okay, I'm going to share my screen. And while I'm doing it, kind of do it with me if you can. Okay, because I want everybody to feel comfortable in this. Because I have done this several times now. And it is successful. You need to broaden your horizons for marketing. Okay, and this really does it for your local areas. All right, I'm going to share my screen. Is it sharing? Let me know and then I'll pull everything up. I'm good? Okay. So I'm going to, hang on, that's Canva. Give me one second. I'm going to set this up so you guys can all see. All right. All right, everybody go to www.usps.com, okay? That's where we're going. And since, because of me having Zoom, I have to move it over. I hope you guys can see this. Um, there's a little magnifying glass. Once you get there, click on that magnifying glass or just hover over it and it will pop this box up. In your searcher, enter a tracking number just put E-D-D-M, which once again, stands for every door direct mailing, okay? And click enter. It will bring up, I hope everybody's doing it. I'm trying not to go too fast. Okay, it'll bring up different results like this, okay? Go to this one, every door direct mailing, E-D-D-M, targeted mail marketing USPS, right here. I'll scroll down a little bit. It's not the very top one. It's just easier to go to this right here. Or it might be that top one. But I always go to right here. Okay. So let's click on that. And it brings this up. Okay. This is just telling you the basic of what EDDM is. All right. So I'm going to go to EDDM online tool. Okay. Okay. So every door direct mail, EDDM, it says search for routes. Now I'm gonna show you for my area, but I want you guys also, I'll give you a moment as soon as I show you how to do it, to do it yourself, okay? So right here, it says search for routes, all right? I'm just gonna put my zip code. You can also put a full address, so that way you're only doing it a certain distance from your home, but I'm gonna do my zip code. My zip code is 83245, and all I'm going to do is hit search. So search for your zip code, your local area, because this is a really good tool. Okay, I got to move that. Now I'm going to come down. It's going to show me here just a basic map key where you can kind of highlight, you can kind of see what it's showing for that zip code, right? I go back up right here it shows that you can look at the map or a table I suggest you're going to toggle between the two so I'm going to go to table and I'm going to show you there's only three routes for my area I live in a small town some of you might have like 20 routes I'm just showing you a smaller option okay so that way it's a little easier to comprehend so right here 
tells you the route number. So this one, it says PO box or P box. That's a PO box. So this is just where you're, they're gonna be delivering them to the post office in those little boxes in the post office, okay? Under here is the regular routes. So this one's route one and this is route two. So now here, this line, I hope everybody can see me toggling my, my little arrow. Yeah, okay. So this is the residential. This tells you how many people are residentials, okay? But the thing with PO boxes, they do not have a way of knowing how many are residential and how many are business, okay? So here on route one, it says there are 79 residential houses on that route. This one, Route 2, has 506 residential routes. The next line is business. Once again, PO Box does not know, the, can't tell the difference between residential and business because it's just boxes. Route 1 has no businesses. So you know everything for that route is only residential people. The bottom one, again, has no business people. No businesses is involved. So when you see your total, this PO box has 396 people, this has 79 people, and this has 506 people, okay? So that's how many mailings you would have for that, for that route. I'd have 396, I'd have 79, I'd have 506, okay? And you can kind of get a basic age range, but I don't know how accurate that is. But if you see here, this is the income range, right? This, this right here here is about the income for that route. So this route is 79 people, their average income is 52.4K a year. The bottom one is 62.9K per year. So if you have bigger routes, you want to do local to you and they are local to you and you only have so many that you can do because it does cost to do this. Um, maybe go for the more higher income because the higher income, you know they're more guaranteed to be able to pay your tuitions, okay? So keeping that in mind, the higher income a lot of times do have more ability to pay your tuition. Um, the lower income could too, I'm not saying they can't and there's no judgment, but if I personally were gonna pick, if say it was a total of 31,000 people and I had to, I only had so much money to invest in this and I could only pick say three of 20 routes, I would go towards the higher income because I know those are more guaranteed to bring in income, okay? And not fight you on your prices. So then right here, it's telling me under cost, how much exactly it's gonna cost me to deliver for each route. And you do have to do the whole route. You cannot pick and choose. So if say this bottom one, this, this uh, route two had 506 residential and say it had a hundred business making 606 total. You cannot say, well, can I only do the residential, the 506? You can't pick and choose. You have to do the whole route if you choose to do the route. Does that make kind of sense, everybody? Okay, so this tells me route, the PO box is gonna cost me $78.41. The route one is only gonna cost me $15.64. And route two is only gonna cost me $100.19. So of course it's a lot more for the more route because you're spending on e dms it's approximately 20 cents um, give or take, depending on your area, um, about 20 cents per mailing, which when you really equate that, you're broadening your ability to bring in clientele. And since I do live in a um, more of a farmland area, it's better for me to do EDDMs than it is to hand out flyers because it's really hard to hand out flyers here or walk door to door and hand out flyers because it could be a mile between houses. So it, it, it gets really hard to do that here. So I find EDDM for me is really useful. All right, so the next step, when you find the routes that you wanna do, say I, I actually already did all these routes this year. So, but you would click on the ones that you wanna do, right? And um, can you guys see this side right here? Okay. 
thank you for acknowledging Sharice. Um, this side tells me I selected three routes. I only have one post office to drop it off at. And I have a total of 981 mail pieces and it's gonna cost me approximately $194.24 to do this area for my zip code, okay? Now, some of your guys' zip codes, like I said, might have a whole lot more, but this is, that's why I had you guys put in your own zip code so you can see your area, okay? All right, so I'm gonna keep taking you through some of this, but I'm gonna skip, skip one step. All right, so you guys can keep looking in your area. You can even, when deciding which routes, I'm gonna pull up my map now that I clicked on all three routes. Do you see how it's blue now? It's showing me, this is where I put for the um, zip code. And if I zoom in, it's showing me all the routes that I chose and where exactly it's going, all those mailings. So say I go back, because you're going to toggle, like I said, between map and table when you're deciding. When I go back, say I decide not to do route one, okay? I'll go back to my map. Now, it's going to show me on route one what I would be skipping. So if I didn't do route one, it's in purple. You see that? And it even comes up at the top here, if you look, what it is you'd be skipping, how many people, what that route looks like. So when you're deciding if you have 20 routes and you can only afford say three, then you can go through and be like, well, I want the ones closest to me first this year, or I'll go, I'll, I'll branch out further because I've tried my, my closest area. I need to branch out further. So then you know exactly what routes and where they're located. That's why both the map and the table are really helpful. So you wanna toggle between them when you're deciding. Okay, so I'm gonna click all three and just kind of show you. So if I click all three, I'd hit next step, which allows you, you need to set up your account. There needs to be an account through um, USPS to be able to do this. Oops, I didn't do that. You need to have an account to be able to set this up. So I'm gonna do something really quick. I'm gonna stop sharing my my screen just for a moment because I'm going to put in my password, okay? So I can show you guys my end. Give me one moment. And hope all you guys are waiting for me that you are looking up your own things. Oh, of course. Hang on one second. I always forget my passwords on everything, so I write them all down. Okay, I am going to bring you guys back up and start sharing my screen again. Okay, are we good on share screen again? Okay, so here, like I said, you can select your three routes, total mail pieces, and my approximate class. So now if you're printing them yourself, which I print myself, like I said, um, or if you have someone that you are gonna have print for you, you know exactly how many mail pieces you need to have printed, which I think that's really 
amazing because that takes all the guesswork out. I knew if I were to do just these re three routes, I would have 981 mail pieces that I would need printed. So that way you can prep it in advance before doing all the prep work here. So I'm going to save the order and I'll show you the difference between both. If you save your orders, you can always come back to them. So if I save this order, I can give it a nickname and I can say, um, let's see, my town name is Income. Um, and I'll save it. So then it says your order has been successfully added to your account, saved order page. And this makes it where you can come back to it as you're going through and figuring out which orders you want. I like to separate when um, doing orders a little separately when I'm doing different post offices. So that way it makes it a little easier for me in the long run. And as I'm printing them, say I can do the three routes really quick and I added three routes to a different um, post office, then I am able to do those at a separate time and drop off these without having everything all at once. So sometimes separating your orders are really good too. If you were to go to the next step, it just takes you in the next step that I'm about to show you as well. So up here, if you go back up in when you're logged in, it says select routes, saved orders, order history, find a printer. So like if you want someone to print them for you and using EDDM. If I'm going to go to my saved orders, it shows you like some other orders I might have saved. So once again, it's all right here, right? So I have other routes that I'm working on currently too that I have here. So like this one shows you this route is only one route and it has 4,112 pieces of mail. So, and that will cost me $814.18. So when you do a lot, it will cost. It You have to recognize EDDMs are an investment, okay? I think that's the biggest thing. It is an investment. It does cost some money, but you can get more clientele that way. Not everybody's online. Even that's why online is nice for marketing too, because you're hitting a lot of people, but you're not hitting everybody. Okay, this hits everybody in your area. And yes, that route alone will cost me a little bit, but I will pay that off as soon as I get one or two customers. Okay, because the goal is if you can get at least, I think when marketing, look at it like this, it's like having a birthday party. Just because you send out 50 invites for a birthday party does not mean 50 people are going to come to your birthday party. You might get 20 people come to your birthday party. So it's the same for like mailings and marketing. You might put out, say, 4,000 marketing pieces of material, right? If you even just get 1% of that, you're getting then, what, 40 people? So the more that you put out, the more possibility of you getting more people in. So if you're only putting out 200 marketing, see what I'm saying? Like you're gonna have much less odds. So I put out a lot of marketing because my I want my odds to be greater because you have to look at it. You may only get 1%, 1% of all the marketing material that you put out. So if you're putting out for 4,000 people, you're gonna get more than if you put out for four, 400 people. Okay, so realize there is an investment there, but you're investing to get more clientele and you're broadening your reach. So if I resume this one that I was showing you guys, it's gonna take me back here and it's gonna say, hey, prices and routes may have changed. You just hit okay. And you just look at your order summary to see if anything's changed. So this does, has not changed. And if I go to my next step, like I was showing you guys, it's gonna ask me some questions, okay? And I'm gonna kind of take you through this part, um, but I'm not going to complete it because I don't plan on doing this route again. Okay, so then you get the option of when you're gonna drop these off, okay? So you can have, I'm so sorry, Sharice, I'm taking so long. Um, you can have like where you pick a date. So say I put, 
October 9th on Monday, I'll have them done. And then look, because you set up your account already, your thing, your preschools is already there. So right now mine's already set up. So I would put the company that's doing it is Forest Friends Preschool. And then I have read and stand and agree to the terms and conditions. I like to pay at post office because then I'm paying the day that I drop them off. So if I have anything happen that goes wrong and I can't do the route or something, I haven't already paid. So I like paying at the post office. So I hit pay at post office. That would come up with, I can't go further in this, otherwise it'll it'll put it in the system for me. But then you from there, um, it'll ask you, are you sure you want to pay at the post office? You hit yes again, and then it brings it up for you. Okay. Or you can pay online. It's totally your, your choice. So I, I'm going to go back. I'm going to show you an order I have already done. And that way it kind of goes over some of your details of what you need because sizing of your EDDM is super important. Okay, I have done all these routes. So I'm going to be honest, I have this year put out at this point almost 8,000 um, almost 8,000 EDDMs, okay? And because this year I said, I'm going to give it my all this year, I'm broadening my reach and I am going out. So I have just been doing my this year's like in the last month. So I am still getting like, Back. People are going to my website. People are looking, and it's actually bringing um, more responses on my online stuff too. Okay, so this is my EDDM. I took Joy's thing, and I made my coupon, right? And it has all my classes, has basic info, things that pop, my logo. Um, how they can contact me. And then the hurry now, call now to take tour and reserve your spot is basically that call to action. You need to have a call to action on your EDDMs for them to actually, like, they're going to receive this. What do they need to do with it? That's your call to action. Okay. You need to redeem this coupon by this date. And you can do anything. I did it $50 off my first month's um, tuition. Okay where that way I didn't have to change certain things in my hub on my um, on my referral, my, uh, gosh, why can't I think of what that's called? On my um, deposit, I can't think of the word. Anyways, um, my registration fee, thank you, sorry. <laughs> I was like, what is that? <laughs> Okay, so that way I didn't have to change anything about my registration fee. And in Stripe, you can actually upload in Stripe coupons, where then you can add that coupon. So you automatically upload an, a coupon in your Stripe. And then when a parent redeems it, you just click on their personal Stripe and you click that you're adding this coupon. So it automatically then, I put in the price for that coupon, it automatically takes off the $50 for their first month's tuition. So it saved a little bit of process through the hub for me. And that's why I did it that way. And then I have on the back, once again, some of my same marketing, right? The tree, um, this takes them, even for people that don't want to sign up, this takes them to my Facebook page and I'm saying, hey, join my Facebook page so you can see all the upcoming things that we have going on. Because there might be people that are nosy in the city and just like want to know what activities and what is this. They want to upload your Facebook. So then guess what? You're building the no trust like factor because eventually after they see so many posts on your Facebook, they are going to start being like, oh, when they hear other people, hey, I, I know about Forest Friends Preschool. They're really good. They have this actually activity coming up for Fall Festival. Have you thought about going to that? And it's just because they have actively seen it on their Facebook, right? Because they added it. And so I have here important things to do and I kind of take it through. And then I use some of Joy's marketing that I hadn't seen on like EVDMs or flyers. I actually, if you see, I took some of her basic wording, and I told them what all they get with our curriculum. This is on our website, you guys. Use it for your marketing. You don't have to reword everything. I just took it and I reused it. And there's nothing wrong with that. You are advertising. You're telling them how good you are and what you're you're giving them. So, you know, I'm telling them. And at the end, I'm, I look forward to teaching you, um, teaching your child this year, you know, like, 
I'm talking to them about all the things. And here it's like, you got to sign up. Here's another call to action. Uh, register your trial right away. We have limited availability. And I took them to the website. Set an appointment to come view our classroom. And then it says, print off the forms in your online members area. Fill out, sign, and bring to this meeting. Have your child attend their first day. So I'm kind of taking them through, hey, this is super easy to get this going. It's not going to take you a lot of work. And it just takes step by step. So I printed these on my computer. This is a normal piece of paper, like a piece of stock paper. I made it a little thicker. And I did the other side. And then when I built them on Canva, I just did a little line on the back side, if you can kind of see it. And that's where I know to cut to make it super easy so that I have them all the same size, right? Little thing to cut, which turns into these. And I use the scraps of the extra paper for other things like marketing for like our fall festival, um, things like that. So um, let's go back. I told you I was gonna show you one of my things. I'll go to the income PO box, okay? Or actually I'll go just regular income. So I'm gonna go into this one. Once you say that, hey, you'll pay in, in office, then you get this. So it tells me what my order number is, it tells me how many, it tells me the post office box where I'm going and how much I'm paying, right? As you go down, it takes you step by step on all the things you need for your mail pieces, okay? And some of it is printing some forms. So if I go down here, there's a button that says print all forms. You do need to print all those forms. And some of them you're gonna print one more, more one time. And I'm gonna show you this really quick because this process is super easy. It'll only take you a few seconds. So it prints these three main pages. This page, same exact stuff. It's telling you how many and it will categorize if you have different different um, routes. So this one only has one route right here, okay? And it tells me this one route has 1,079 pieces. This is one I'm working on right now and I'm actually turning in today. So, um, and it tells me what my cost is. So you print these off. You're not gonna need to write anything on this paper. And then it has, you have this one and you only have to write a few things on this paper, okay? So. It here, you're gonna wanna click the EDDM retail indica, total number of bundles. So when you bun, you have to bundle up your, your stuff. You can either do it in bundles of 50 or in bundles of 100 of each of those flyers. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So I have it where I just put, um, you know, like a rubber band around them. And I do mine in bundles of 50. So here's 50 of the same, because it has to be the same marketing material. You cannot have several different things, okay? So this is the same thing in a bundles of 50, all right? And so I found it easier in bundles of 50. You guys can do them in hundreds. It's up to you, depending on your route, okay? And then um, you put how many of those bundles you needed to have for um, for that route, okay? For all of the routes that you have on this page. And it then asks you total number of pieces per bundle. I just put 50 or less because I had to write, I do it in 50. If you do it in 100, you have to put 100. And then you sign, you uh, print your name and you put your phone number. And that's all you have to fill out for that paper. And then the next paper is for them as well. You don't have to do anything. It just tells you the routes, same kind of stuff. So th those are the th three full pages. It'll print one more, a fourth page. Mine is filled out, but it will print this, okay? So this page goes over the details and you're gonna attach these to your bundles. So you put your date, the date that you're doing it, how many pieces are in the bundle? So I have some bundles that don't have a full 50 because the route might be 981, right? So then I have 56, I have 31, what, 31 um, in a bundle and just one bundle for that route because that is the odd number. Everything else is 50. So I would put 31 here, but right now this route has 50. And then you put what slip is this? So you will have to copy and print this one form, OK? 
okay? However many bundles that you have, you have to have one of these forms on every bundle. So it will only initially print one, but then you have to do the math on how many of these, depending how many bundles you have. So of this order, because I have a thousand, what was it, a thousand seventy nine. This order, I have twenty two bundles. Okay, and so this is the paper for twenty two of twenty two. So if it's bundle one, it would have that spare amount of twenty two. Does that make sense? One of twenty two, and then you'd have that that odd number of in that mailing. So then you fold them at the line, fold them in half, and you attach it to your bundle. Okay. So I have this just slid into the front of my bundle. And then you take your bundles and your three papers into the post office and you send it off. And that's how easy it is. So you do most of the work at home. They do all the work getting it to people. And on top of that, um, you do need to, in this online stuff, look at the sizing of your mailings, okay? That is a big thing. Um, see how it takes you through every step of what you need to do in this. It says prepare your mail bundles, the 50 to 100 mail pieces. And it even kind of talks you through right here. If you have 585 mail pieces, bundles of 50 require 12 facing slips, that kind of thing. So up here, you're gonna wanna go double check your mail pieces. We have specific requirements for mail piece size and format. If you hit use our mail piece size checker, it's gonna actually take you through and you have to give the requirements of what your mail piece size is to make sure that it fits within it. It gives you what your requirements are here, okay? So you can't just take any piece of paper and expect that that's gonna go in the mail. You have to be within the sizing or they will reject it, okay? So make sure you look here and you double check your retail mail piece size checker, all right? So that's why I did the sizing that I did. I couldn't get two of these on one paper because of the sizing. They have to be like this almost abnormal size where it's just a little bit bigger. Does that kind of make sense? And then on top of that, on your mail piece, you have to have it say in the corner, these things are essential. You have to have this, uh, the EDDM, retail uh it's like a stamp but they actually on their website you can't see it on their website they have a copy of this that you can copy paste or you can type up just the same exact thing in a little box in a little text box and add it but it has to look like a um like a stamp because you're just giving the information that this has been paid for and it has to say local and postal customer okay so that way it is identifying itself as a marketing piece of material and as an EDDM. So those are required, all right? That's why I did mine like as postcard kind of type thing. I've done things in the past where I um, folded up paper to have the right size and I did stickers for those to make it a little easier because it wasn't wouldn't be amicable to print. See, I just had it printed on these, which made it really easy for me when I do these. But on other ones, when I folded them up, I just did stickers. So I printed this and like a mailing label as a sticker when I did the fold up stuff. So there's different ways of doing it. You just have to make sure your mailing is the right size within their details and that you have those two things. Those are the biggest things about your EDDM. Um, so then you can go through here and as well as the thickness. So you can't just have one single piece of regular paper. It's not thick enough. I did cardstock on mine, okay? And I just did like a, um, a cheaper cardstock from Walmart. I found Walmart has um, a cheaper cardstock. It's like $5 and some change for 150 pieces. So for me, that option was cheaper. But like if you, I said, if you're going to have someone else print your stuff, then you um, just go for whatever their pricing is. But make sure your thickness is between this 0 0.007 and uh, 0.75 thickness. Okay. And then you just have to stay within their requirements, which are these three things.
Um, I believe that's everything for the every door direct mailing. I was going to take you guys through a Canva thing, but maybe um, if people want to stay after, I can do that since I'm out of time. I know I'm way out of time, but Sharice, would you, I'm so sorry. <laughs> There's just so much to marketing like this could go on for hours, but um, should I open up for some questions really quick? Would that be okay? Or no, I'm really out of time. Okay. So I hope that um, kind of helps. Um, I'm in the Zoom meeting a lot of times uh, for after and chit chatting, but if, and I'll try to read through some of the messages on the site if you guys did have a question and try and answer them. Um, but thanks for having me. I'm so sorry I went over. I hope I taught you a little something today and maybe in the future I can teach you guys like a fun Canva template for marketing, but there's so much you can do. So don't, don't be afraid, have courage, get your name out there, show them your face and um, show them your logo. It's huge. All right. Thanks guys. All right. Thank you, Don. That was awesome. Thank you so much.